Kindness. We see it all around us. We see it when someone pays for someone else's coffee or holds the door open for another person. We see it in the smallest of gestures, like a smile or a kind word. But it's different when we turn on the news or social media. Oftentimes, what we hear about, what outlets are pushing, is the opposite of kind. Welcome to the Kindness Matters Podcast. Our goal is to give you a place to relax, to revel in stories of people who have received or given kindness, a place to inspire and motivate each and every one of us to practice kindness every day. Hello and welcome to the Kindness Matters Podcast. I am your host, Mike Rathbun. This is this is going to be such a fun episode, you guys. I have as a guest, um, Jenna Saunders. Say hi, Jenna. Hi. <laughs> I told you it was going to be fun. <laughs> and Jenna, um, and we're we're talking about kindness today. And, and Jenna has a couple of different ways. There's a couple of ways that that we can look at kindness through Jenna's experience. I should also mention that um, Jenna has a podcast. I don't. I don't interview a lot of other podcast hosts. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's kind of fun. Well, it's kind of fun because we all know how to talk on microphones, I guess. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully there won't be any crosstalk. I, I'm horrible at that. Oh, it's fine. That's kind a guest of, that's will say something. About, yeah. No, See? it's fine. That's how that's how um, interviews go on the office ADHD show. Since we all have ADHD, that's oh. one of our problems is that we interrupt each other all the time, and so it's it's fine. Maybe I could be on because I'm a I'm apparently a recovering um, H, at least the H portion of that. <laughs> so we were just talking about that off the air. Audience, you are not in on the joke. Um, if you really want to know, hit me up. I'll tell you. At any rate, uh, so. You were diagnosed with ADD in your freshman year in college. Is that correct? That's correct. And you said that you'd always wondered, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where when you have ADD or ADHD, it's kind of two different terms you just, we kind of throw around. It They get categorized, ADHD has been categorized differently throughout the years. But it's one of those things that when you don't know you have it, then the best way I've heard it described is like you're coming to work and you're complaining that you're there late because you have car trouble. And everyone's like, well, everyone gets car trouble sometimes. And their car trouble is, oh, I couldn't find a gas station. Where your car trouble is, I had my tire completely fall off while I was in the middle of the highway and I had to repair my axle that you're using the same words, the fact that I get distracted or I have a hard time remembering the words on the page when I get to the bottom of the page. But it's just to such a greater extreme that people okay. don't understand really what's going on in your head. And most people with ADHD feel like they're lazy and like they just never get enough done and they never quite feel accomplished until they realize that this is just all part of their brain wave pattern. Okay. All right. Huh. I might, I don't know. I'm like 63. I don't know if I want to go back in and get tested for that. It's just like, yeah, that's just the way he is. He's a boomer. That's just the way he is. <laughs> I actually interviewed a guy who is now 83 who got didn't get well, diagnosed until he was almost 60. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh yeah. I have you ever had that? It's like, I just don't want to know. Yeah, to each their own. And one of the things that I like about knowing is that um, one of the things just talking about kindness is it helps me be kinder to myself. It helps me say to myself, okay, hold on. You just want to be doing a million projects because you can see how it's done. Because I, I can stop and see how the one-man band works. I think I need to not just play the harmonica. I need to play the entire band. And it's like, it's okay. It's still amazing that you're playing that harmonica. And it helps me to stop and be kinder to myself. Yeah, because you really, I mean, and I think when we talk about kindness, we kind of overlook the whole be kind to yourself part. 
uh, it, the the whole focus of kindness is generally you being kind to others, but but being kind to yourself is also very important. And that's one thing I think I didn't realize for a long time when I was younger too, is that when you're judging yourself really harshly, it's hard not to put those standards on the other people around you. It's oh. hard not to say, you know, I worked really hard to make sure I, I don't know how to clean shirt today or something. And so then you notice anybody who's not wearing a clean shirt because you're judging yourself harshly on that. Oh, I never actually even considered that. But now if we have, if we have a coworker, let's say, and, and this is perfect because the title of your podcast is Office H ADHD. I knew I was going to mess that up. Doggone it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to leave that in too, just so everybody knows I'm not perfect. Um, if we have a coworker who has ADHD, how can we be kinder to that coworker? What's, what's the best way to do that? I think one of the best things is just know that they are going to fidget. Don't worry about their fidgeting. Like we, that's one of the things that we do. Um, like, yeah, like I bounce my knee all the time. It's okay to laugh about it, like laugh about it, about things with us. And it's, a, and remind us of things. We're going to get really excited, but we are very bad at actually sitting down and making lists of this needs to be done and use our strengths. Uh, if you ever get stuck and you need ideas, the ADD people, we have a million ideas. We will get you unstuck. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes to execution of those ideas, we might need a little help Maybe with little actually help. sitting down the time planning of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were talking about bouncing the knee. And I remember as a kid, it was probably about the time I was diagnosed with it. That was the one thing my mom would always say is it quit bouncing your knee. <laughs> I know when the table, like at my house, the table will start like shaking like crazy because so many of us bounce our knee and my mom will be like, cut it out guys. It's not an earthquake. <laughs> oh, so uh, you have siblings that have this issue as well? Uh, only one that's actually diagnosed, but <laughs> we all, my dad bounces his knee. And so I think we all kind of find it comforting too anyway, just because he does it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. That okay. So so just look for the look for and use uh, if you're in a an office situation look for that person with that superpower and use that superpower. And understand that they might be different, but that's cool and that's okay. Right? Exactly. Did yeah, I get that right? The yeah, exactly. Because we all we need all the differences. People with that was one of the things that I used to when because I, I taught high school and middle school for quite a while. And one of the things I used to teach them is all of your learning disabilities and all of these things, they're just superpowers in disguise. They're just things that you haven't learned to use the abilities that they give you. And that's what you do too with, you know, somebody that's annoying you at work or somebody that you're just like, oh my gosh, how can they possibly think this way or be this way you say to yourself well because we need all these differences in the world we need somebody that can balance everything out that's such a great take i love that because yeah i, I think there's a tendency uh here in the u.s especially for all of us to expect everybody else to think and act exactly the way we do and if they don't then they're the other <laughs> for the audience. I'm using air quotes. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I, you know, if you don't worship the same way I do, you don't vote the same way I do, you don't whatever the same way I do, we put those people in a box and, and we really need to understand that we need all of these different ideas and these different thoughts and these different whatever. Yeah, just because somebody thinks or believes differently than me, it doesn't threaten my beliefs. Right. I can still believe and think how I want to. Right, right, for sure. Absolutely. And I wanted to talk to you too, because, I, and I've had this thing rattling around in my head, 
and because there's not a lot of brain up there, there's a lot of space to rattle. <laughs> so I, I, you were a middle school teacher? Yes. Yeah. Yes, oh, boy. <laughs> I think teenagers are hilarious. They like going through another toddler phase. They're too funny. Oh, <laughs> another <laughs> toddler phase. <laughs> That's awesome. And you say this as the mother of a teenager, right? Yes, I do. I have my own 14-year-old. Do you tell him that? Oh, yeah. You're just like you were when you were a toddler, just a different phase. Yeah, they're so funny. They're just too funny. Like, you know, a little kid's experiment. They're like, can I poke this? Can I touch that? What happens when I step on this? And the little, you know, the little middle schoolers, especially, they come into the classroom and they're like, why have I not been putting my feet on the desk all these years? What was I thinking? Then they put their feet up on the desk and you're like, because it's not allowed in the classroom. Put your feet down. They just have to try it all out again. <laughs> but some of the worst bullying, I think, happens in the middle school years, doesn't it? Yeah, the hard thing is, is that the middle schoolers don't, they, they're still learning to regulate their emotions they're still learning empathy that there's a certain point. I'm not sure what age it is for sure. They really start grasping the concept of other people literally thinking and believing in different ways than they do. They can okay. get that grade school, that grade school version of, I don't like being poked. So other people won't like being poked but they can't understand a full version of somebody completely thinks differently than I do. Okay. I was, uh, I was talking a couple episodes ago with um, a gal and she, her, she started a group in Bucks County, Pennsylvania called Bucks County kind. And she got the idea after she, um, she paid it forward. And bought somebody's bagel and the person came in and she was there waiting for her orders still when the person came in to get that bagel and and the gal who she bought it for was very grateful and she had her kids with and she thought you know usually we don't like to do kind acts performatively you know mm -hmm. we don't do it for the attention and the kudos yeah but in this particular case she said my kids got to witness that and they got a better understanding of what kindness is and how it can make both the receiver and the giver feel good. And yeah. just that whole thing about teaching kids about kindness. Oh yeah. And that's a big thing. Like, especially like you said, at that middle school age, I remember, and they get into bad habits, especially I had one year there were just, they're like, you know, you just, teachers will tell you, you get, you kids run in years where sometimes you just end up with one whole year of kids that just have a problem with something. And I had this one year of kids that they were just, I don't know, they were just kind of mean to each other. And so finally I just sat down and I was like, okay, each period of class, I just had them do a different experiment to try and be kind to each other. I was like, even to the point of saying, you can shout at somebody and say something nice, be like, I really like your shoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you have to say it in a mean voice, that's fine. But say something nice to each other. Like, that's know. hilarious. <laughs> I really like that shirt. You're such a nice person. I'm glad <laughs> you're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I started. Oh, oh god. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, if that worked, didn't it? Yeah, like it, sort of it helps. And I think one of the big things is for kids that age and, you know, anybody any age is pointing it out to them. Sometimes they don't even realize the things they're saying and the things they're doing and what's coming out of their mouth. And a lot of the, like, I know a lot of them had picked up slang phrases or that, like I said, they're toddlers. They will just repeat things they hear in rap songs or different things oh, like that. Sure. They don't even know what the word means. And you have to pull them aside and say, okay, listen. That's <laughs> that is not appropriate. Not we say in polite society. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I, and did you, did you, no, I'm not going to go there. 
<laughs> well, as a teacher, I mean, how much of that responsibility fell on you to teach these kids? I mean, did you ever see a kid who just absolutely had no concept of kindness or polite behavior? Oh, I mean... You don't have to name names. No, oh, no, no. I would never would. But, like, yeah, no, I mean, I would make up a name, but, like... But there's, <laughs> Yeah, there are... Um, there are students that know more than others. And then... Because every student, it's it's just part of a teacher's job. It's just part of a teacher's yeah. job to teach you about polite society. And I, I feel like half the time I taught math and science, depending on the year. And even though that was my main topic, almost every day we would stop and, and learn something about life. You know, we would teach them about life as well. And yeah, there were some that knew more than others. And there were others that had just learned to how to get away with anything they wanted. And so you had to kind of reteach some yeah. of them. Okay. This isn't going to work for you for the rest of your life. I'm sorry that you get away with everything at home or, you know, that other people have let you get away with stuff, but you know what, one day you're going to have consequences and we're going to start some consequences now. Okay. And then, yeah, here's a little taste of the consequences. It'll be worse when you get out in the real world. Yeah. And then you I was also using have air quotes again. <laughs> and you also have kids that have different issues or things like I, I had a number of kids that were on different levels of the autism spectrum too. But oh. even then, like anything, honestly, anything that helps people with the autism spectrum helps everybody like sure. <laughs> to, to go over it. And so like we had lots of things where we would stop and talk about, okay, when you say this thing, how do you think people take that? Do you understand when you just suddenly open a door in a classroom, how that affects everybody else in the classroom, not oh. just you and not just the person you were trying to get the attention of, you know, this, this kind of awareness of what you say and do and how that affects the people around you. A lot of them are just still somehow developing that. And somehow they just don't, sometimes they don't have the words. And so a lot of times it's giving them words. It's saying, okay, in this situation, here are things you can say. Right, right. Well, I know there's, there's, and I don't know enough about it, and I, I probably shouldn't even bring it up because I'm not that well educated on it. But there's a, a, there are two factions out there. One that says we need social emotional learning in school, which are you, are you familiar with that phrase? Oh, yeah. I don't, it, yeah. It's been, okay, I didn't know how long you'd been out of the teaching. Um, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, because that that is basically teaching empathy, right? Kind of like what you were just talking about? It kind of depends on the program that you're using. Okay. A lot of it, so you're teaching both empathy, emotional regulation, like kind of how to take care of both yourself and others. Uh, you know, basically, and I, I think that the problem is, is that some programs are good and some programs are not so good. So okay. if your school has a good social emotional learning program, then it's awesome. If it doesn't, then it's just kind of boring for the kids and it does no good. Okay. But then there's another side to that. The people who say that's something the parents should teach and you shouldn't be teaching my kid that in school. Well, I mean, should and what does happen are two different things. Um, I mean, the thing is, too, I think that there is also benefit for them learning that with their peers, because oh, then sure. they get a chance. Because, I mean, there's one. Uh, yes, I do think te that parents should be teaching this and, you know, guardians should be teaching this at home. That is 100 percent. But I also think that talking about it in a school environment where they're actually there with their friends, you know, whether or not you actually do role playing or anything, which I, I'm not a huge role play fan, but yeah. like personally, right. but I, I think even just talking about it with other people, it helps kind of solidify it for them. Sure. Because a conversation with their parents or their guardians or, or whoever the case may be 
might look a whole lot different than a conversation with their peers. Yeah. And so it gives them a chance for us to, you know, ask questions like, well, and it gives them a chance to give each other ideas, which actually adds to the whole, you know, kindness sure. idea. Like we can just say, hey, what are some ideas? What are some things that you do when you're stressed? And then they get to all raise their hands and they get to talk about things they do when they're stressed and give each other ideas. And then they can bond over hobbies and things they both have. Yeah. Yeah. I play video games. I play video games too when I'm stressed. That kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And then they can be like, hey, let's exchange gamer tags and we'll play together. You know, <laughs> or gamer tags. I, yeah. Okay. The last time I played a video game, Super NES came out. Brand Yay! new. That's the musical interlude of this program. Yay! <laughs> so, but now you're you're a gamer mom, are you not? Yes, I play video games with my my son all the time. Love it. That's great bonding, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I think it's great on a lot of levels. I mean, it's good bonding. I mean, and then I know exactly what he's into. It's like, like your kids want you to be a part of their life. They right. want you to understand what's going on. And so that way, when he comes and tells me, even like I don't play every game he plays, but he knows that I understand games and how games work. Sure. And so I go, you because know, I've tried enough of them. And he, so he'll come and he'll show me. He'll be like, hey, mom, watch this part. Look, look at them all explode. Or look at these guys do this thing or and then or watch this funny glitch that happened. You know, it's kind of then I can get into it with him a little bit or at least, you know, laugh and smile along with him. Yeah. And, and he knows that if he wants to share something, you're going to know exactly what he's talking about. And and that's so fantastic. That's cool. I again. OK, so my youngest. And we were just talking about this the other day, too. He was over for a visit. And and we were talking about how I got him a PS2. It was brand new Ooh. when the PS2 came out. And we had Jack and Daxter and I think Kingdom Hearts. The very first Kingdom Hearts oh, had come out. Classic. I didn't play too much with him. I played a little bit. But, I mean, seriously, that's the extent of my game. And... and his his half brother, his older half brother, was big and and I I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You know, it's like, hey, I'll play with you. You know, it's a shooter game, right? Pow! Like, <laughs> oh, that lasted about two seconds. And and no I wish now I had been I had been better at it because I think it would have given us something to bond over more. Well, I mean, I think honestly, the fact that you tried is the biggest thing. I think then... try is being very generous. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, like even now, like my my son and my nephews, they love playing with the grandparents. I don't have any nieces, otherwise I would have said the nieces too. But okay, um, <laughs> they, they they love playing with the grandparents, even though they aren't as good at playing video games. But they just think it's fun that they try, and so. You know, they just they have a good time playing with them and laughing and saying, OK, wait here, push this button. It gives them a chance to be the expert at something and learn to teach, too. Yeah. Oh, well, that's I never thought about that. That's kind of kindness is letting letting your kid teach you something. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So talk to me about podcast or office ADHD, your podcast. When did you start? I actually just started this year in February, March. Um, I started it because I, I felt like there isn't, there aren't enough resources out there, I feel like, for adults with ADHD. It also helps, you know, kids and people with all ages with ADHD. But I felt like there were a lot of adults out there that are, you know, looking for information, looking for products, you know, looking for things that I could take into the office. And that there just isn't a lot out there. A lot of it's, you know, bright rainbow things that kids can take to schools. And I thought, you know what? Let's get some more things out there for adults. That also well, that's right, because you're, you're making and selling. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to We're think. working on getting products, products out there. 
I am working on getting products out there right now. I'm showcasing products that are out there and that I'm working on right now. I'm working on getting fidget pins and things going and things you can fidget with under your desk and stuff like that. And so they're on the horizon. But are yeah. fidget spinners like old hat now? Are they old news? Nobody does those anymore. Oh, fidget spinners are a classic. They'll never go away. And some some people, they even make cool ones. Like I have one that has like clicks so you can kind of move it around and then spin it and then move it around and then spin it. Like, yeah, fidget spinners are a classic. I'm They'll seeing a lot of little push in bubble things now. Oh, yeah. Those ones are kind of fun. I like the smaller ones personally. Like kids kind of like the bigger ones. I like just having a small one that I can have in my pocket and play with and no one sees. But, hey, <laughs> you know. It's like bubble wrap, only not as loud and distracting. Exactly. And they're all squishy <laughs> and fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's cool. And and are you enjoying your podcast experience? Yeah, it's great. I highly recommend podcasting. I think it's a lot of fun. And it's, it's fun to be able to have because sometimes you just get all these ideas and these messages you really want to get out. And so it's great to be able to finally get that out to the world and to share with people things that, you know, are really close to your heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yours is, yours is ADHD and mine is kindness. Yeah. We're getting the message out. Yeah. And honestly, that's one of the, and that's one of the things that I thought so cool about your podcast. Cause that's one of the angles that I really try to, to pull out to is with every interview and with everything I try and pull out to how to use that to be kind to yourself and to say, you know why you're great the way you are. Without going into a, the whole Al Franken, Stuart Smalley. Have you, okay. You might be too young for that. You know who <laughs> Al Franken is, right? The name is familiar, but mm, he was probably. he was on Saturday Night Live back in the day, oh. and then he became a U.S. senator from Minnesota. Nice. And then he was forced to resign. Oh, that's not good. I know it's a whole roller coaster thing, but he did this character called uh, Stuart Smalley, and he would do daily affirmations in the mirror. You're smart. You're fun. <laughs> people like you <laughs> and doggone it yeah what oh what did he say no we have to google it now that's one of those things that like then it suddenly comes back to you at like 3 a.m and you're like ah! <laughs> oh for pete's sake i know right um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm typing i'm typing oh i should have already done this one <laughs> well, how would you know that's going to come up? See, this is one of the great things about when you're interviewing someone with ADD is you really never know where the conversation's going to go because, I don't know, we could suddenly start talking about Mount Everest for no reason. <laughs> so some of his phrases were taken from 12-step uh, slogans. Like, oh, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. That's what it was. Yes! That's where that comes from! I've heard yes. that a lot, but I didn't know where it came from. And that's just stinking thinking. Yeah. Well, so cool. anyway, yeah. Sorry. Boy, wow. Was that, that a dude? That was kind of an ADD moment right there. Because I yeah, just went. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes you find the squirrel and you have to chase the squirrel. You must. You must chase that squirrel. Exactly. I learned that from my dog. <laughs> And that's all right. He was a fun squirrel. I feel like another, that that feels like a book. Lessons learned from my dog. <laughs> yes. Well, Jenna, thank you. God, this has been so much fun. I really appreciate you coming on and, and give us, giving us some insights on how we can all be kinder. I yeah, really for do sure. appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. Hey, we'll yeah, do sure another one. We'll, we'll come up with something else. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, you take care. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Jenna Saunders, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, I'll tell you what. Um, if you want to have fun, start your own podcast. Because that is the definition of fun. Uh, it was so great having her on the show. 
I absolutely loved it. Got some insights into how to be kinder to people with ADHD and also maybe some insights into uh, into our kids and how uh, how we could teach them kindness and empathy and that was that was awesome. And I got insights into how I could have been a better gamer. <laughs> so there's that. Thank you so much for the gift of your time today and listening in, and we will be back next week. But until then, be that person who roots for others, who tells a stranger they look amazing, and encourages others to believe in themselves and their dreams. You've been listening to the Kindness Matters Podcast. I am your host, Mike Rathman. Have a fantastic week.